I'll just kind of run through and then we'll jump into questions at the end if that's okay. Sounds good. So, um, so the Paycheck Protection Program is part of the CARES Act that was passed a couple of weeks ago, the $2 trillion um, fake money uh, printing uh, that occurred. So why not get some of our own monopoly money as small business owners, entrepreneurs, sole proprietors, um, 1099 uh, independent contractors. That's really what this intends to do um, is to keep people uh, financially solvent, functional, allow those who have employees to keep them employed or to unfurlough staff uh, over the period of time when, when this is um, kind of reaching its apex in terms of the COVID-19 um, pandemonium and all the, all the havoc it's wreaking on the economy. So um, there's $350 billion set aside as a part of that plan to make something called Paycheck Protection Program Loans. Um, these are offered uh, to businesses. Well, we'll just jump into it here. What is the, uh, what is the I'm just going to call it the Triple P program. Um, it's, uh, again, a component of this uh, $2 trillion relief act. And yes, we don't know how many zeros that is. Um, it provides, uh, again, $350 billion. And the, the key here is not loans, not disaster loans. These are forgivable loans. So you should think of these as grants. Um, if you use the proceeds of the loan uh, for covered uh, and allowable uses, the government will forgive it 100% uh, of, the, of the expenditures. Um, and everyone should be able to, uh, to, to see these loans forgiven. Um, so it's mainly small businesses, uh, not-for-profits, 501c3s are also included, uh, veterans organizations, tribal organizations. Um, and anybody negatively impacted by coronavirus, which is uh, everybody broadly drawn, you just have to say I've been impacted and then you're eligible. Um, okay, so uh, that is kind of the big high level overview. Am I eligible? Uh, if you're qualifying entity type, which is probably either everyone on this line or everyone on this line's employer, um, you are eligible. And if you have, again, 500 or fewer employees, um, there are some exceptions that probably won't matter to anybody on this line. If you've got multiple locations, uh, they'll, they'll treat this by location, but that's mostly food service and other heavily impacted industries that's intended for. Um, so you are probably eligible, eligible to participate. Uh, how does it work? Um, so what happens is that you verify the monthly, and we're gonna call it payroll expenses, I'll put that in air quotes, payroll expenses. So if you don't have a formal payroll, you're a sole prop, uh, you're an LLC that has a Schedule C, you pay your taxes at the end of the year. Um, it's, it's basically, uh, if, if, you create, if you generated income in 2019 as a business interest, um, then that's what we're looking at is payroll expenses. Um, and there's, there's kind of a list of things that can go into that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. This is where most of the questions are, well, does this count? Well, what if I have a W-2 and then take distributions as an S-Corp? Well, what if, what if, what if? So um, we'll talk about some of that. There's some additional regs that came out last night that are gonna clarify that, and there's still gonna be questions that the lender is gonna have to answer uh, as they document these things. But that's the idea um, uh, for payroll expenses. So we're gonna take um, your payroll expenses, you average it out uh, over 2019. If someone uh, did not start their business until 2020, uh, you can take the uh, uh, interim average kind of year to date of, of revenue. For most people, that's not the number you're gonna wanna use here, but um, you multiply the monthly average of payroll expenses by two and a half, and that's your forgivable loan amount. So, um, to, and, and this is capped at, and I will talk about this in a second, at $100,000 per employee. So if you got an employee and they made $150,000, you only get to count $100,000 of those payroll expenses for that employee toward your total payroll expense. If you're an individual uh, independent contractor and you made $200,000, you're going to be capped at $100,000 of what you, can, uh, what you can, can use here. Does that kind of make sense? And so you repeat... Front, <clears throat> would you just said yeah um, so to figure your loan amount and how much you're allowed to borrow uh, for this forgivable loan 
you take your average monthly payroll expense from 2019, in most cases it's 2019, um, and you multiply that by two and a half times. And that's your loan amount. There's no way to add to that. That's, that's how you have to calculate it. And, and the lender will require some documentation that that is your actual um, monthly average of payroll expenses. And think of payroll in terms of income if you're an independent person. Um, and, and, uh, but uh, FIT and FICA, the, the self-employment taxes is gonna count toward, well, we'll get to, in a second, I'll give you the list of things that count uh, as payroll expenses. But that's how you figure the, the amount. You have to use these loan funds in the eight weeks following the disbursement of your loan for qualified expenses, which is primarily payroll expenses. Um, but if you can't use all of those funds on payroll expenses, say you had 10 employees, you, you've laid off five, two of them found another job, and you can't hire them back. So you've got a gap between what you borrowed and, and what you can spend on payroll. Now you can add a few other qualifying expenses in. Rent uh, is one. Uh, if you own a commercial building and you're uh, paying on that, uh, mortgage interest, not principal, but interest uh, will count. Utilities may be included uh, as well. So there's a few additional ways uh, to get loan funds forgiven if you can't spend all of it on payroll. But you can't use those things to calculate your loan amount on the front end, and that's an important uh, distinction. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, so 100% loan forgiveness. Uh, there are no, uh, it's worth mentioning, well, I'll mention it here. What's, what's the fine print? How does it really work? Uh, are there loan fees, et cetera? So let's look at the fine print. Your interest rate is 1%. Terrence, you mentioned this earlier. This is something that makes it a little bit less than attractive for a lot of banks to participate. So there's some challenges in figuring out a lender that can actually do this. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Like, I think the big question is how do I get mine? Um, and so we'll, we'll talk through that. But interest rate is 1%. Uh, you make no payments for six months. Interest will accrue on the government's dime to the lender for up to six months um, at 1%. Uh, and the idea is that you'll have this loan forgiven before you ever have a payment come due, okay? No personal guarantees required, so it's a non-recourse loan. Um, you don't have to pledge uh, any collateral. I'm sorry, there's no fees, so no closing costs. It's a, a zero fee program, uh, and you don't have to pledge any collateral, okay? Uh, so the only risk to you, you do have to certify that you will use the loan funds as intended. If you go spend your loan funds on a bass boat, the government can come after you, so don't do that. Um, but for most of us, we're going to take these funds, we're going to pay ourselves, we're going to document that we paid ourselves with the funds or our handful of staff, um, and that'll, that'll be done in a week or two after the loan funds are dispersed. Um, if you have any unforgiven loan amount that for some reason you um, don't have enough qualifying expenses on the back end, uh, the loan will term out over the course of two years, and so they'll break it down into principal and interest payments at 1% um, over the course of two years. Uh, hopefully most people will not need to, to use that provision. So that's it, it's a pretty straightforward program. I just saw what looks like the final application on this about 20 minutes ago. Shane sent it over to me. Um, it's a two page application and it's mostly boxes that you check to say you're not a criminal. It's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, the biggest challenge is going to be documenting your payroll expenses for 2019. Uh, all right, what can I count as payroll? Generally qualifying payroll expenses include salary, wages, and similar comp, uh, compensation. Again, including sole props and independent contractors. This has been fuzzy up until now. I think the regs released late last night are going to provide some clarity here. Um, but just think it's, it's essentially earnings of each employee in your, in your business, even if that's just you. Uh, payment of cash tips, think restaurants, uh, think uh, coffee shops, et cetera. Um, payments for group healthcare benefits, if you do pay for your own health insurance uh, or a health um, uh, sharing agency or anything like that, or for your employees, those are eligible um, expenses to count toward your payroll uh, costs. 
if you pay a vacation uh, for sick leave or parent, parental family leave, all of these things are uh, included expenses, uh, payment of state and local tax related to compensation, not federal withholding, but the other taxes uh, related to compensation. So um, payment of retirement benefits, if you've contributed to 401k to uh, uh, for an employee or to a SEP IRA for yourself, um, those are gonna be included, payroll expenses as well. Um, if severance, dismissal, probably not real relevant to most of us, but that counts also. Uh, again, the detail has been vague up till now. We should have a lot more clarity uh, on this guidance from the SBA and Treasury Department uh, by Monday, is my hope. And we'll be on a conference call a little bit with a trade group to, to learn a little bit more about the final language here. Um, what is not eligible to be counted as payroll? Uh, payments, again, of salaries exceeding $100,000. Um, federal withholding, not eligible. Um, expenses for employees outside of the U.S., uh, obviously. Um, and then if you've taken sick uh, leave relief or family leave relief by another COVID-19 relief program, that has to be backed out. Um, of, of your, of your uh, payroll expenses. So you can't double dip, in other words. Uh, how do I get one of these loans? Here's the rub. Um, by statute, these have to be delivered through the SBA 7A loan program. Um, so you have to get one of these from an existing SBA lender, and there's about 3,500 banks and a handful of finance companies in the country that, uh, that make these loans or uh, you have to get it from a bank or finance company that applies to deliver this specific product and is approved for it. And there's not really a good functional list of those yet. So here's a challenge that, um, my next door neighbor is a great example of this. He has a law firm, he has about 10 staff, he got his application ready, a local bank says, I'm gonna take care of you. Um, and I said, great, it's good. Um, get that done and yesterday afternoon the bank the lender emailed him and said i'm sorry we can't do the loan for you because the bank figured out that they can only charge one percent interest which is a drain on a bank's liquidity if they don't know when the government's going to buy the loan back um and uh and also they they just don't have most banks do not have the expertise uh the manpower the wherewithal to know how to deal with the sba so if you can get this from an existing sba lender um, that's highly preferable. Um, if you have an existing SBA loan, uh, then you should reach out to your lender. The, the people that will get the first round of this financing are people who already have a loan and are sitting in the portfolio of an existing SBA lender, because those lenders benefit by putting a, a free liquidity injection into their borrowers. It makes them more able to pay them back. So all those people are gonna get loans first. Um, and then some SBA lenders are going to release this program more broadly to new customers. Most are not at this point. And so that's where my partner Shane and I, because we work with these guys, we, we have a feel for uh, which lenders are rolling this out more broadly and which are keeping it just to their own customers. So you really, um, people want to call their local bank. Their local bank really can't help them. I'm a Chase customer. And this is the other thing, there, there are a few large national banks that will provide these to their business customers. If that's the case for you, you'll get an email from that bank saying, you can apply for this loan and there's a specific channel. You can't go to the local branch even and ask for it. So I got that email from Chase last night. Uh, I will probably take this through. Uh, one of our clients who makes SBA loans because I know it'll get done faster than you know, 20 or 30,000 in the queue at Chase. Um, so you, you just want to ask a few um, questions of someone who's a lot of people know about this. A lot of people's brothers make are making these loans at the bank. You need to ask what their um, wherewithal is to make SBA loans. Were they making SBA loans before this program became available? Are they approved uh, to make them? If the answer to that question is no, um, and do they have the staff to to deal with the documentation and the and the influx of these applications? Because if not, then you're gonna be stuck in the queue somewhere. Everybody's gonna be stuck in the queue regardless because there's so much demand for this, but you wanna make your way out of the queue eventually. So I, I would say um, if, uh, if your lender uh, has not made $30 million of SBA loans in the last year, 
I would question their wherewithal to deliver this efficiently for you. So, um, so those are just some questions to be thinking about asking. Um, who should I get my loan with? Uh, this is what I just said. So, and I can share this deck if it's helpful to you guys afterwards. Um, something that we are doing right now is, is uh, started by talking to neighbors and friends who have businesses to, to Heather and Stoke to, uh, and there's just a lot of folks that qualify for this. Um, we're working really hard to, to get connected with a couple of national lenders that are willing to do as many of these applications as we can get them to do. And then just funneling those people in there and try and help as many folks uh, get this as we can. And we're applying personally for it. Um, so we're in the same boat as the rest of you. We just have the dumb luck of sitting in the sector that is the fulcrum of where all this stuff is happening and knowing um, I mean, eight of our clients are top 50 national SBA lenders last year. So we just kind of are in a spot where I, I think we're able to create introductions to the right people uh, better than most, most people can. So if you'd like us to help you with that, um, you can email me, uh, you can email this email address that we set up just to deal with these. And as soon as we have final application and information on what you need to put together to, um, to get your application submitted, uh, and we know where to shepherd that, that we're confident uh, it's going to get done and you're not going to uh, get jilted, um, then we're glad to help if you'd like us to help. So um, a lot of people ask this, can, um, can Mark Cuban make my PPP loan for me? And uh, unfortunately, no, he can't. We're sorry about that. Um, he does like to talk about it on CNN though. Uh, we think it violates his social distancing policy. So, um, so that's, Kind of an overview. That's a bunch of information real fast. I hope that's helpful. Do you guys have questions? And I'm going to try to leave that up. I'll just uh, exit this here and, and uh, 